Okay, thanks for um, tuning in to this lecture, uh, which is an introduction to XML. It's really the start of a sequence of lectures about XML and the format of XML. And this is designed just to give a little bit of an orientation and a context to the um, lectures that are going to follow. So here's some key points. XML and HTML have co-evolved, and they've informed each other along the way. HTML was made by web authors who were trying to solve problems quickly. In contrast, XML is a rigorous description of a language for tag-based data that came much more from an academic community. The motivation for um, teaching you this is that many user interface designs are expressed through XML or XML-like languages, HTML being one of them. HTML is a lot like XML. And by understanding XML, it's going to help you with doing web development, it's going to help you with debugging network problems, and it's also going to future-proof, give you some future-proofing against new technologies if new technologies come along that also use XML as its standard for describing data. For starters, what does XML stand for? Well, it stands for Extensible Markup Language, um, a way of communicating data that can be extended to other contexts and other uh, kinds of data. It's not limited to one particular kind of data, except it's, it's extensible to lots of different kinds of data. It's a markup language because it's a way of marking up text documents to give them structure. And it's a language because it's a syntax that's put on text files in order to describe data that's present. HTML is similar. It stands for hypertext markup language another markup language, a way of describing or adding syntax to a data file to describe what it is. In contrast to XML though, HTML is designed just to describe hypertext or what we've come to know as web pages. As the W3C has said, HTML is the web's core language for creating content for everyone to use anywhere. XML, in contrast, isn't just about the web. It's about data generally. So let's look at a short history of HTML. Um, we can start in like 1989 maybe, when Tim Berners-Lee invented the web with HTML as its publishing language. He based his design on SGML, which was a previous kind of, there's the ML, previous kind of markup language. Um, and the idea of HTML was to separate the idea of the data from the presentation. Um, that, that was also present in SGML, but what SGML didn't have that HTML added was the idea of adding hypertext, or basically a link that you could click on that would connect one document to another document. We're very familiar with clicking on links in web, web documents now, but at the time at which this standard was developed, that idea of connecting two documents with a link was new and was sort of a core innovation that Berners-Lee um, brought to the table. In 1993, one of the first browsers was developed. It was the Mosaic browser. Here's a screenshot of what it looked like. Um, fonts aren't beautiful. The web layout looks like it's from 1993 or the interface looks like 1993. The Mosaic browser eventually became Netscape and then sort of found its way into um, Firefox a little bit over time. Shortly after that, in 1994, the World Wide Web Consortium was formed. For decades, the World Wide Web Consortium was the organization that was responsible for defining the various languages and syntaxes that are used in various kinds of web languages um, that we use every day. In 1995, the um, web browser Internet Explorer from Microsoft was released. This was a big deal in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the stories um, that's famous about the introduction of Internet Explorer was the way in which it was introduced um, at no cost. This was kind of a new idea when it was introduced. Microsoft made money on selling its uh, operating system and on selling software and its operating system. But they gave away Internet Explorer for free, um, and that was to compete with the other browsers that were present at the time, predominantly Netscape, for which you had to pay in order to get access to the browser. This was a, a really radical business plan at the time and succeeded in um, sort of wiping out the rest of the competition, quite frankly. 
and established Internet Explorer as the dominant browser for years and years and years. So it was a very successful business move by Microsoft and also made Microsoft the leading, um, you know, the leading first mover in a lot of the web standards that were developed early on. Um, eventually, after HTML 3.2 standard was released in 97 and 99, HTML 4.01, which was around for quite a long time, um, the XHTML standard was released in 2000. And then in 2014, the HTML5 standard was um, established and formalized by the W3C. So a lot of years of progression and incremental progress. 2017, the uh, World Wide Web Consortium um, published HTML 5.2. That little badge there is the logo that was um, built, was made for HTML5 as well. And then in 2019, there's a pretty fundamental shift um, between the way the standards were organized from the time frame leading up to that. In 2019, HTML became what has now been called a living standard. It has become a um, standard that is regularly changing and being updated. It, has, it is now being managed by the WHATWG, which, if I um, recall correctly, is the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group. And this is an organization that was formed by um, primarily um, browser companies and technology companies that were very interested in moving web standards along faster. One of their big complaints was that the W3C, although it had done a very good job of organizing the standards, was very slow. And the kinds of progress that the companies wanted to see made in the web browser just was not moving fast enough. And so the management of, those, of the standard has been shifted over to this new organization um, relatively recently, 2019. So XML and HTML, I've mentioned both of these languages. They've had a rocky relationship kind of from the beginning. I mentioned that HTML is really formed out of people who are working in the um, web space. And XML was a language that was developed primarily in the academic space, even though they're very, very similar languages. And for a long time, the W3C was working to merge them together into a language called XHTML. And they did release an XHTML standard. What XHTML was, it was a merging of HTML and XML. It was okay, but again, the industry participants who were trying to move web technologies faster than the W3C could manage continued pushing HTML forward um, to the HTML5 standard, which is not quite XHTML anymore. And we'll talk a little bit in future lectures about how they differ. Um, so anyway, there is a relationship between the two. Um, they have merged at one point, but strictly speaking, um, they're not the same anymore. If you want to look at them visually, this is how it lays out. There are some um, documents, there are some files that are HTML. There are some files that are XML. And there are some files that are both XHTML, that are XHTML. Those are the files that are both HTML and XML. There are examples of things that can be either, but not, not the middle one. So fundamentally, what is part of HTML5? Well, let me read this quote um, from Communications of the ACM, which is a professional organization. They described HTML5 shortly after it came out as being most often thought of broadly to include new versions of the markup language, it, uh, itself, which has been developed over time, and its associated standard for accessing and manipulating HTML documents, the document object model, cascading style sheets or CSS, a language to define the presentation and appearance of an HTML document, and the JavaScript scripting language. The term is often used even more broadly to include specific application programming interfaces, such as those that enable new browser-based graphics, geolocation, local storage, and video capabilities. So when we say HTML5, we're actually talking about a whole group of technologies that include JavaScript, for example, which is a completely different programming language than what you might see if you looked in an HTML document but they're all very closely related. So they all come under the banner of HTML5. HTML, I said, is a living standard now. And it's very interesting because you can go into GitHub, which is an online software management website. Um, and you can see the updates that are made to the standard that come out um, weekly or several times a week. 
Sometimes there are small changes to the standard, which is a document that describes HTML, maybe editorial differences or maybe slight variation, slight corrections in the way the language is described. But it's a continual updated document, um, and you can go and you can look publicly to see how it's changing over time. And so we no longer talk about HTML as having a version. Um, HTML is now kind of a perpetual updated standard um, that isn't versioned um, after 5. XML and HTML, and I'm going to throw in JSON as well, which is a different kind of data language. All three of these are structured data formats. They're all structured data formats that evolved with the web. Over time, from when Tim Berners-Lee um, invented the idea, these three languages have been developed and interchanged and swapping ideas between them, although they're different now. They've always been different. They continue to be different. Um, they're just at their core text files. And each one, of the, each one of them has their own particular syntax that's associated with that particular language. All of them can represent a huge variety, a huge amount of different kinds of information. And what they enable is they enable clean data transport, meaning it's easy to take a file that's written in one of these languages on one computer, a Macintosh, for example, and send it to another computer, say a Linux computer, and have both of those computers be able to parse and understand and decode the information that's present in each of those files. Um, different programming languages can be written that are going to work on an XML file regardless of what kind of computer it was made on. And being able to standardize on these kinds of languages turns out to be remarkably tricky. And so all three of them enable documents to be moved around the web even though there are all kinds of different networks and operating systems and computers that are working with them. So let's take a look at one particular um, snippet of XML, just to give you a sense of what it looks like. Here's what would be inside a particular XML document. Now the color here is just associated with the editor. The color is not part of the language. It has just been added by the text viewer that I'm looking at to help understand the different pieces. But if you just look at this for a second, you kind of get the sense that what's being represented here is some kind of a message, maybe an instant message message or an email message of some kind. You see it at the top, there's a reference to XML, and you see that there's some information like that there's a note, and there's to, and a from, and a heading. And you can see that in addition to there being something that's describing the data, like to and from, the data itself is there. And so by reading this XML document as a human, you actually have kind of a little bit of a sense of what's going on here. Maybe not enough to understand it completely, but enough to get the gist of what's happening and probably enough to edit it. If someone asked you to change who this note was from, it would be pretty straightforward to know how to edit this file to do that. So the brown things are called, or the brown and um, blue angle brackets together are called tags, and they are call, also called metadata or data that describes data. So body is a tag, and body is metadata because it describes don't forget me this weekend. Don't forget me this weekend would be considered data or the body of your message. You could imagine that someone might see this message and not ever see any of the tags associated with it, just see the Tove, J um, Janny reminder, don't forget me this weekend. All right, so given that little example, what is XML? Well, XML is data, and it's stored in a text file, just like we just saw. And it's designed to separate the content from the presentation. So if you think about that previous example that we just saw, nothing about that describes how it should be shown to a user. Nothing about the graphic design or the aesthetics of how that information should be shown. Just what the content is and what the content means. In XML, the tags are not predefined. That's what the X stands for, extensible. So the, tag, the from tag, for example, no one has uh, said that that's a tag that I can use or that I must use. In an XML document, you can use whatever tags you want as long as they're structured the right way. Contrast to that, HTML does have specific tags that are predefined, and that's one of the ways in which they're different. If you would like to add your own tag to an XML document, you can, as long as you do it in the proper way, which we'll describe in future lectures. XML is designed to be self-descriptive. 
you should you can kind of read and understand what XML documents are by reading the metadata in the tags. Um, the tags work like metadata. The tags can be metadata. In some cases, the tags are metadata. Now, XML doesn't do anything, though. Even though that looked like it was an email message or an instant message, it doesn't actually do the work of sending that message. It'll just, that information just sits there in a file because it's a data format. If you want to do anything with that file, you have to have some kind of program, a program that can read the data, a program that can change the data, a program that searches the data, a program that displays the data, a program that sends the message, whatever it is, something has got to operate on that file. Otherwise, XML by itself doesn't do anything. And even though the data seems to be associated with a task, without a program reading it in and doing the task, it's just a text file. So some key points to take away. XML and HTML have co-evolved. They're very similar. They've um, grown up together in a web environment. HTML was pioneered by web authors and web um, companies who were trying to solve problems very quickly. XML, however, in contrast, is a rigorous description of a language for tag-based data. I haven't really given you enough information to be able to identify how to write XML or how to differentiate them, but I just wanted to give, give you the short introduction so that you have a little bit of context um, as we move forward and talk about the specifics of XML. Thank you for your attention.